All right, good afternoon and welcome to uh, Christmas in February or National Signing Day. Uh, thanks for being here. I know it's kind of a messy day, but uh, appreciate your time. Uh, obviously today, big day for Tulane Athletics, Tulane football. Um, before we introduce Coach uh, Curtis Johnson, if you guys need any one-on-ones or anything with the assistant coaches, um, just let us know. Uh, tonight from 6 to 7, we're going to have a signing day party up uh, right up one floor above us in the Glazer Family Club. Uh, you guys are all invited if you'd like to come. And now I'm going to introduce our head coach, Curtis Johnson, to talk about his fourth recruiting class. Well, I just want to say Santa was really good to us this year. Now, for this, on this Christmas theme, it was great. First of all, I just want to, I got a couple of announcements to make just to get everybody caught up to where we are. Doug Lichtenberger will be our special teams coordinator and our linebackers coach. Carter Sharon will coach our wide receivers. Byron Ellis, so all these letters coming to me about all these jobs, send them to Byron Ellis. He's our ops guy, assisted by Wayne Cordova. David Johnson will be our overall recruiting co coordinator. Dietrich Belvin will be over recruiting him and Lindy Wirtz, and that is the newness of everything. Very few faces change, but the people are just moving up in the world. First of all, I'd like to thank all these parents that came out and supported us. I want to thank Wyatt and Michelle, Lyle and Tricia, Demetrius and Glenda, Lawrence and Fabrica, Elgin and Lakirsha, Dan and Mary, Leewood Senior and Sharon, Michael and Naomi, Chantel, Sandra, Dexter and Valerie, Andrew Senior and Terry, Joe and Sharon, Tyrone and Deborah, Maxine, Tanisha, Roderick and Tanya, John Senior and Lisa, and Tiffany. These are the most important people, I think, in the recruiting parent process is the parents. They were there, they saw the school, they saw the, the facilities, they saw what was best for their students, and our offensive coaches and our defensive coaches and our personnel did a phenomenal job getting this recruiting class together. We signed, we had a, 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 a variety of signees this year. This is the first year where our numbers kind of didn't skew as much as they did early on in the recruiting process here at Tulane. We had to go heavy on defense. You know, we lost some critical key defensive backs. One or two of them were surprises, but we knew we had to do that. We had to get some more offensive linemen in here. So this was the breakdown of the class. We had on offense, we, we got three offensive linemen, two running backs, two wide receivers. And these receivers are big, tall, and physical. One thing that we hadn't got. We got seven defensive backs, which this league, everybody's playing with, with five and six defensive backs all along. So the defensive back thing, every year I'm going to stand up here, it'll be a reoccurring thing. Two defensive linemen and a punter kicker that can kick the ball to the sky. If you ever see this kid punt, you, you just be, you'd be amazed how far this guy can punt. Amongst our signees, it's pretty incredible. We got two state champions, two four runner-ups, two semifinalists, 15 guys in the state playoffs, and 14 guys played 4A ball or higher. And that was the, the theme of the year. We want to get guys competitive because this league is a very, very tough league, and we wanted to get guys who are used to playing in big games because there won't be any bigger games that we're going to have in a, in a, in a not-so-distant future. A little bit about our signees, and I'm going to just give you a brief rundown of all of them, and I'll open this up for questions. This defensive line, we, had, we knew we had to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we went up to Monroe and got big John Washington, who, who was, who record was 45 and 11, four state champions appearances and one state title. He was honorable mention all state and first team all district, had 55 tackles, 24 tackles for loss and six sacks. And this is an interior, interior player. Brian Webb also, all Metro, all district here from Miller McCoy, 67 tackles, 34 tackles for loss, and 10, 10 sacks, six forced fumbles, and he was played in the classic game. This secondary got to perform for us coming up this year. We know we lost some guys. We only got Monroe and Perry, guys who played from last year. So here we go, Darius Black, senior, had 66 tackles from Bell Chase. He was selected at the high school all-star all game. Malik Eugene. The MVP of the district, MVP of the state championship game from Acadiana, two-time state champion selection, Louisiana top 50 player, and, and had 1,100 yards rushing and 11 touchdowns, 50 in tackles and, 11 in and one interception and a fumble recovery, and he's a 100-meter champion. Roderick Teamer from Brother Martin High School right down, right off Elysian Field. 
two-time state playoff berth, named first team All-State, All-Metro, and he had two interceptions and 116 tackles. Jeremy Francis combined 37 and 19 record, four state champion, four times trips to state championship, finished state runner-up as a senior, was first team All-District selection. Doug Henry, who was injured a portion of the year, combined with 15 wins, 22 tackles for loss, 10 PBUs, despite only playing in four games his senior year. He's all healthy now. He had four interceptions and 28 tackles and a kickoff return for a touchdown. One of my favorites, Taurus Chanel over at John Everett High School. Named all district, honorable mention all state, 60 tackles, 11 interceptions, two forced fumbles, and seven receptions. I mean, he's one of the better players we will have in the state. He's just one of those lockdown corners. Dedrick Shy, another first team all state. We had two first team all staters in the, in the secondary. Four tackles for loss, 22 PBUs, once forced fumble. Talk about this punter now. This guy here is amazing. Went seven, four for six on field goals. His long was 48 yards. He averaged 40. 0.8 yards per punt, rated in the top 20 punts, punt, punters in the country. Big Leewood Brown, let's talk about this young man just a little bit, was a combined Miami commit from camp last year. At the end, Miami's kind of fudged on him a little bit. This guy said, look, I'm going to the best education I can find. He's from Bar Broward County, all first team, defensive All-American game. He had 27 and 10 record, three state consecutive state playoff appearances and Leewood is about six foot four, about 340 pounds. He's going to be playing offensive guard for us. Keon, Keyshawn McClain from, from Florida, from the west, east, west coast of Florida, from the Tampa area, first team all area, senior class. He's a senior Hall of Famer. He's also a basketball player. Keon Smart, and that's, that's that from, oh, from Baton Rouge. That is our other smart kid. That's his, his, his little brother, but he's really the bigger brother. He's a six foot four, he's about 320 pound basketball player, first team all area, first team all metro, first team all district for Keon. Our running backs, we can't get better and more and more running backs. I don't think we could have gotten any better from a year ago with our freshman. This kid is out of sight. Nigel Anderson, senior from Saint, from uh, out my, my way, from East St. John High School. 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, combined record of 20 and 27 and 10 overall on four trips to the state championship, to the state playoffs. Devin Jett Glenn is our little Spros. Finally got one. He's an all-district player, a thousand yard rushing, 14 touchdown, pull down 10 passes, and, and a top, top flight return guy, state runner up his senior year. Our two big receivers, Andrew Hicks, right there from Bell Chase, played quarterback, played running back, played everything. He had a 1,300 yards, 19 touchdowns on 154 carry, carries and threw for 1,500 yards. He'll be playing wide, wide receiver for us. Darius Slim Williams, six foot four, of almost about 185 pounds, was honorable mention all state, first team all district, had 57 receptions and 10 touchdowns. That's the, our recruiting class and what we did, we addressed the needs we got the wants, we got the wills, we got everything we ever wanted, and we did miss out on a couple kids, but who we missed those kids to, I'm proud to say our coaches really got in there and they fought, and they fought well with those guys. Any questions? The, the two wide receivers are coming into a team. I think you've only got four returning <laughs> scholarship wide receivers, so those guys are gonna have to come in ready to play. What do you, you, you think they, they'll be able to do that? Oh, absolutely. You know, one, the one thing you know, for, even from a year ago, receivers are one position. You know, you look at rookies in the NFL. You know, you look at our rookies. When I was at Miami, we had young kids playing. They'll be fine. They'll be ready to play. The one thing we needed, though, we needed some bigger guys, some bigger, taller, more physical guys. And I think we, we've addressed those needs. Most signing days for you here have been rather uneventful as far as you kind of knew who was coming in. Um, was today a little bit more hectic than, than, than you're used to, at least on actual signing day? Yeah, you know what, about very, very similar to what it was. There's always one or two kids that we find that we, that, that we have, you know, a little bit of problems with one way or the other. And, and, and you know, if you're doing that, you know you're in great competition. Excuse me, but I, I would tell you this, our coaches are on kids so soon, you know, I, we, we, we got two commitments this morning on 2016 kids. So they're already out there. They're already on these kids. And, you know, in the next couple of days, I hear we're going to get three or four. So for us at Tulane to get them in school, to get on them this early, we got to stay on top of them. But I think we're going to do absolutely outstanding again next year. 
As far as Darius Williams goes, uh, you know, he had been committed for a while, but it was like quiet. And then he took a visit, it sounded like, the uh, week before. Can you kind of talk about it, the process with him and, and, and sort of uh, why it played out the way it did? You know what? When you're a good player, when you're a good player, you know, it's, it's, like, the, it's like, the, like my wife. You know, I'm telling you, she had about 20 men after her, but I just went out. You know, so whenever you got, whenever you got good players and you got good people, guys going to come after him and they're going to go after him and they're going to go after him. And, and look, if we didn't have Darius Watts locked up, I would be trying to get a visit from, from Darius Watts. I mean, Darius Williams. That's what, I, that's what I've done, what I what I would have done. And you never know. So, but he's a very, very good player and, you know, he's with us and he's going to play a lot. He's one of those receivers that we just talked about. Um, can you talk about the decisions uh, regarding the coaching staff? I mean, you had holes to fill, you had decisions to make, and, you know, is there going to be a co, I, I assume there's no co-defensive coordinator? Yeah, there is. I'm, my, my, I'm sorry it wasn't typed up here. Jason Rollins will be co-defensive coordinator. Those guys work so well together as, as co. I just really love to see two guys doing it on a defensive end of the ball. And, and what you do, you got to understand how it goes. you got so much variety in offenses. One guy does probably all the option, and then the other guy does some of the other stuff. Stuff. So it's so much dive option and stuff, but but those guys work so well together. I like John and, 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 and Speedy's uh, relationship. That's Lionel Washington, and, and so, so is Jason and, and, and Speedy's. And you know, we, we looked around and we said, okay, we interviewed a lot, a lot of people, and, and Doug Lichtenberger was the best fit for what we do here. He understands this community. He understands Tulane. He's a fantastic special teams coach, and, he, and he, in, in a linebacker position, he can do that also. Very, very smart guy. One heck of a heck of a recruiter. So we just felt that th those were the best that we could guys that we could find that fit this program. And then Carter Sheridan was my assistant at Tulane, and and I actually promised him a job when I left here. And, and you know we we got full because we stayed in the playoffs too long. And soon as we had an opening, we were gonna get Carter over here. At the site, excuse me. My wife corrected me. Brian Webb's kind of an interesting situation. That he, he's from a school that's not going to exist anymore after this year. But you guys were on him pretty early. Can you can you just talk about his recruiting? You know what? I, I would say this. His mother was the one that, that said, hit him over the head and said, "You got to come. To, you got to go to Tulane. Education, education, education." He was a kid that went to was going to Mississippi State at one time. He was us, Mississippi State. It was Ole Miss. It was all across the country. This kid was going, and I said, "I guess it's like Dorothy. It's no place like home." So he ended up signing with us. He's a big get for us. Very very good player. Coach, can you talk about the three guys you got from Warren Easton and also the one uh, that, that you didn't get from Jesuit today that you, you had left the scholarship open for? Yeah, yeah, you know what? I thought the kid from Jesuit, look, he had two good choices, us and LSU. You know, he made a good choice. I, you know, this is a great school. This is a great choice. But, hey, that's up to him and his family. You know, hey, best wishes to him. You know, I'm glad he, he's an in-state kid. He went to an in-state school. I pull for all in-state schools. I'm sorry. I don't have a rivalry with, with anyone. I like in-state. I love the Saints. I love LSU. I love all those places. But you know what? The guys that we do have, though, these two, these, corner, these kids from Warren East, now these two corners, we shut down corners. You know, as, as Lionel would say, they are long. They tall. They long limb. They fast. They can run. You know, these are guys that we're looking to come in, we're looking to come in and play, and looking to come in and play right away. The decision not to take a quarterback uh, in this class. Uh, I, mean, I know some coaches have the philosophy you should always take one, and, you know, I know you redshirted uh, Glenn last year. What was the thought process between kind of leaving that? Was it just a numbers issue, or was it just you didn't kind of see anybody you really liked that much? No, we, we don't want to we, we, we don't, we don't wanna take one every year. You know, we got all these quarterbacks. We got a sophomore. Two sophomores, I mean, a, a junior, a sophomore now, and a freshman. And that's what you want to do. You want to kind of build it, freshman, sophomore, junior. Now next year you come back in with a freshman. You know, you want to have four on the roster. If, you, if, I would, if, we, was, if we were to run an, an offense where, you know, the quarterback was a runner and, and you take more, but I like the guys we got. They're classic drop back passers. You know, they're good players. And so, you know, we like what we have. We like where we are with quarterback. CJ, I talked to Devin Glenn about half an hour ago, and he talked about how you wanted to use him as kind of a Darren Sproles type. But all the guys I've talked to have said that the one reason why they wanted to come here is because they see that if you come here and you can play, you can play right away. I would imagine that's how you sold 
Tulane to the majority of players in your list here? Yeah, yeah you know, we do it like, and, and Carter Sheridan can tell you, we do stuff just like the NFL. You play, you play rookies, you play anybody. It doesn't matter where they come from, how old they are, or whatever. You're going to make some mistakes if you play a lot of them, but you, we play everybody. We want to give everybody a fair chance to get on the field. Everybody want to run out of the smoke. Everybody want to run into the tunnel. Everybody want to score in this end zone. So, so that's what we, we sell guys on. You're going to play early. We've proved it. Those guys were effective. Those young kids, kids played. They were effective last year. They did some good things, and, and definitely we, those kids are going to come in. They're going to help us win this season. Defensive end is a position that probably could use some more depth. I mean, was that something that did, you know, did, did you have guys targeted just didn't quite nab them or, you know, what happened? At yeah, that? We, we just we, we just looked at the defensive ends that, that we had targeted and, and we just said, you know what, we'd rather take tackles and defensive backs and then what we could do next year, we'll go a little bit heavier at the defensive end position. But the guys we had targeted, we didn't feel that they were the guys that we needed that would help us win in this conference. So we kind of let them go. And, you know, I thought the tackles were better with John and Brian. And, and uh, so, so we went in that direction. You've mentioned big a lot of times today in <laughs> positions you want to get bigger. You how, saw our games. <laughs> how important, after going through the American last year, how important is that? Was that maybe the number one priority for you? Absolutely. You know, we looked at ourselves and we looked at the teams that we got to beat. You look at the Memphis and, you know, what Houston had and, 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 and Cincinnati. Those guys were much bigger than what we were accustomed to playing against in Conference USA. So we had to get out and we had to go out there and we had to really, really, you know, change our philosophy a little bit. We had to get much, much bigger players. And I think we did. We really addressed it with our offensive line and our defensive line. Uh, as far as the staff issue, you know, you're, you're, every hire you've pretty much had, um, you know, in the last couple of years has been someone you, you've known. Um, it's been, you know, you've, you've kept people that are pretty close to you. Doug obviously has been here. You said you had a relationship with Carter Sheridan. Um, what is that philosophy? Is, is it just continuity as much as anything? Or is it these are just people that you, you trust off the top? What is sort of your thought process as you are choosing a staff and that it's been uh, relatively uh, people that are close to you? All of the above, you know, you want to keep as much continuity as you can, especially when you think you're going, when the ship's going in the right direction. You need guys that understand, you know, Tulane and understand what we are and what we do and what we have in front of us. I just can't get guys to come in here and just expect that, you know, these guys are going to want this, this, this. You got guys very, very educated, guys who really understand what we're doing with these kids, what type of kids we have, Louisiana kids. And I, and I like guys who can cook red beans and rice, so all those guys can do that. So, you know, they really, 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 really like what we got. I like those guys. Talked a little bit about social media um, <laughs> a minute ago. You've been tweeting a lot about discipline and hard work, and I was just curious. You know, <laughs> how are we doing uh, discipline-wise with the team? Is is everybody in good standing? Well, well, well look, and, and and one thing about me, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm take a shot at us and our team. We led the world in penalties last year. <laughs> We led the, the, the free world. There may be a team over in the Soviet Union or somewhere that, that had more penalties than us, but, but we led the world. So the one thing we got to get, we got to get a little bit more, more discipline. It comes with a little bit more maturity. You know, we had a bunch of young kids playing, and they would jump offside, and I would get mad, and then they would look at me like, Coach, it's no big deal, because in high school we did it all the time. Well, it is a big deal. So now, you know, the discipline, that's one of the things that we got to do, that aspect of it. So we try to go out, we try to go out and get smarter players and players that were on winning football teams. Just touching on that staff, how big of an advantage is it to have continuity the way that you had it? I know it's not exactly the same people, um, but, but you at least have familiarity. And, and how much has that provided to you? And especially as you get ready to start the spring, does it allow that transition to be a little bit shorter? Huge. Huge, just because of how we practice here, how we practice spring, how we want everything to flow smoothly. Everyone knows everything. Everyone knows the lay of the land. They know what we're doing. This is, they know we practice in the mornings. They know what's the expectation of the, of the student athletes. They all know everything. I think all that plays a major part in being here at Tulane. You, got, you have Malik Eugene listed as a safety. He pretty much excelled wherever he was put on the, the field last year. Is that an open-ended conversation with where you guys are, are going to play him or, and, and what do you think of him? Well, well, 
I'm going to say it's not open in the conversation because I don't want Speedy and Jason to kill me, but it's definitely an open ended conversation. He's such a great athlete. But, but those guys looking at me now, they, 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 they chomping at the bit to get Malik, Malik Eugene on the field. You know, they got the perfect position for him. They know he can run. He can swarm the ball. He's a hitter. I love to look at him, catch the ball out of the backfield, you know, and do some other things. But, you know, I think those guys may win out. They're meaner than I am. Coach, I know you, you said you wanted to have more size on the, uh, on the lines. On the offensive line, do you think, uh, especially in the case of Brown, is he a guy who can come in and, and win a dry job as a true freshman? And Absolutely. how hard is that to do? I, I mean, an offensive line is the hardest position, you know, on, on the field. I think offensive line and corner, and co for different reasons, offensive line, just learning the line calls, but putting the right situation. I think Brown going to help us somewhere in the offensive line. I, I don't know if it's going to be game one. I don't know if it's going to be game six. But, you know, I'm looking forward for him to come in. And, and, and for what I saw on tape, I, it's going to be hard for me, if he plays like that for me, not to play this kid and play this kid early and often. I know it's hard to find a coach in America that thinks they didn't do everything right on signing day. <laughs> we give yourself kind of an assessment of how you think this, this day went for you. Was that as you expected? And where do you think you missed a little bit and wish you had gotten a little better? Well, you know what? You always want to do a little bit better. You, you always like to get, you know, a little bit. Uh, I would say, you know, you want to get more, more, more offensive linemen, more defensive linemen in the trenches. Those are the two places I would say where you want more of. Maybe we probably could have gotten another receiver somewhere. You know, that 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 right there. I would say if you if you ask me where the misses were, uh, I would say that. But but uh, overall, you know, I like look. Look, I was so nervous last night. I went to sleep early and, and woke up. My wife was snoring. She kind of woke me up a little bit. Angel does snore. But, uh, but, then, but, th but then I started to think about this class. And my problem with the class was I was thinking about, I can't believe we're getting this kid. I can't believe we're getting this one. I can't believe we're getting Malik. I can't believe we're getting Black. I can't believe we're getting Slim. I, uh, uh, then I called Slim Darius. I can't believe we're getting Hicks. You know, it, it, was, it was so many I can't believe that I really couldn't sleep because I scared myself. But all those kids end up coming and end up signing with us. It's a great day for us. We have time for one more question. Thank you guys very much.